There we go. There we go. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting, Thursday, January 24th, 2019. First item, we have a request for permission to hold the Bolton Youth Bat Baseball's opening day parade on April 27th, 2019. Christine Zina, are you here? Hello. Hi. Come on down. Come on down. <coughs> how are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. So Bolton Youth Baseball Electric Bus um, Open Day Parade, as we've done in the past. Um, April 27th is the day we've chosen this year. It's after the school vacation. Uh, the season will start prior to that, but we'll hold the parade later in the month. Um, same route as always from the uh, school of 117 to Memorial mm -hmm. um, Fields. Um, I don't have an exact time. I'm thinking once I get the details and if it's approved, um, probably around 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. okay. Looks like Chief Nelson has approved this. Just, just yeah. one question. Do you have a rain date? Or is it um, Saturday will, and that's it? I believe it would probably be Saturday and that's it, but I will ask um, the board okay. if there is a rain date. Um, I was not made aware of that. Okay. I think we kind of plan everything to come that day, and if it rains, we okay. don't have it. Okay. Please okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> At least not tonight. So it's starting raining in August, so that doesn't stop. I know, I know. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, I don't have any questions. You know, Chief's approved it. You've done it before, so I'm happy with it. Any questions, gentlemen? Fine. Okay. We have a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve the request to hold the Bolton Youth Baseball Opening Day Parade on April 27, 2019. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Thanks. very much. We have a request for permission to hold the Bear Hill Triathlon on Sunday, June 16, 2019. Sue Reedich. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.
Um, the refunding issue uh, ends up being a 10-year issue uh, of approximately 3.7 million uh, par amount in uh, general obligation bonds. In early January, January 7th, the town administrator, treasurer, accountant, and I met with s and Global Ratings at their offices in Boston. Uh, a few days after that, we received word that s and Global Ratings had assigned a AAA rating to the town. Um, the discussion there was that the town's very strong economic factors, cash position and debt position, were really key to the rating. But um, the, the rating is also supported by very by strong management policies and practices and strong financial results over a number of years. Uh, and it was also helpful uh, to look at comparability to other Massachusetts municipalities that have the AAA rating from S&P Global Ratings. Um, on January 16th, last Wednesday, the town took bids on uh, the refinancing bonds received nine bids. The winning bid came from SWBC Investment Services in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, true interest cost of 2.01% approximately. Present value savings of approximately $331,000 or about 8.25% of the $4 million of bonds that are being refinanced. Mm -hmm. Total dollar savings of over $375,000 over the 10 years of the issue. And for the next six years, uh, um, the debt service will be affected with the reduction of four cents on the tax rate uh, each year for the next six years. Um, the schedule going forward is that after tonight, the bonds will settle on January 30th, next Wednesday. Uh, Kristen will send a letter to the paying agent, the U.S. Bank, instructing that the refunded bonds be redeemed. Uh, uh, the 2009 bonds will be redeemed on April 1st, the remaining bonds on March 4th, uh, which is just over 30 days after settlement. Um, the actions that um, you are asked to, be, to take tonight are a vote to award and execute the bonds um, in conjunction and uh, <coughs> consistent with a form of vote that was provided by Lock Lord, uh, bond council for the town, and to sign various documents, bonds, tax certificate, uh, general certificate, and so on. So, um, Mr. Chairman, through you, I'd be happy to address any questions. Um, as, as I was, as you just pointed out, we <coughs> had a conversation, and one thing I didn't ask was, um, the new bonds keep the same due dates basically as the old bonds, right? It's not as though we're taking another 20 year bond out there. They will finish up at the, approximately the same within a month or so of the date of the bonds that were originally issued. They are, in fact, um, the 2009, the bonds that are refunding the 2009 have exactly the same dates, okay. um, as do the, um, the ones refunding the April of 08. The town is actually paying um, the 06 and 07 two and a half months early. Okay. Both the interest so and the... So what I want to make sure everyone understands then is that it's not as though we, we took a loan and now we're stretching it out another 20 years. We're in fact fulfilling this, the town is, is, is embarking on the same obligation, but at much less cost. That is correct, sir. Okay. Um, so it's, it's a great thing for the town. And um, there's the prospect of another $4 million later this year as other bonds come due. I, again, it's a prospect, not, not a sure thing. Well, um, I think that I plan to have a conversation with the town administrator, the treasurer, and the accountant uh, looking at uh, the bonds that were issued in October of 2009 um, to see if there would be the possibility of doing another refinancing. Um, I mean, until the end of 2017, actually, um, it would have been an option to include the, that issue in this uh, mm -hmm. issue, but Tax Reform Act of 2017 eliminated what are called advanced refundings, which are um, issues that pay off bonds more than 90 days before a redemption. Okay. They, those were allowed before December 31 of 17, not allowed after okay. that. So, but, but there might be more good news coming. If the 
future rates go up and all that other stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of variables, yeah. And what we would do um, in discussing this with the administrator, the treasurer, and the accountant is to roll the existing uh, capital financing short-term notes into that issue as well. That would be an option that we would um, look at and have them pass it on. Okay, good. Thank you. I, well, I, I just want to comment that while we're having this conversation, it, it really should be stated that this is really a big deal. You, a town can't get any better rating than AAA from Standard & Poor's. You can't do any better than that. And it's a testament to the long-term fiscal responsibility that the town has undertaken over many years. The town treasurer and the town accountant working very hard, the town administrator, all the departments uh, and the, the fiscal oversight and management that everyone has done for a very long time. This is not something that we just kind of work, you know, 90 days and we got it. This, this is a long-term thing. And it is to the credit of all the town employees and the town administrator uh, and the advisory committee and, and, you know, other boards and whatnot uh, who have undertaken this for a long, long time. So I think they should all be commended that it doesn't get any better than this and you know, the end result is, is I, I talked with Mr. Lowe this evening, the, we did put up on the website just the short press release that came out, but I think what we're going to do is put up the longer report that Standard & Poor's did, which really outlines in multiple pages how they determined why Bolton got the AAA rating and I think, I think uh, everyone will be very impressed with what Standard & Poor's is a totally third party organization had to say about the manage the financial management of the town of Bolton and I think everyone's going to be very impressed uh, when they do that and, uh, I, and I know the board of selectmen are already well aware of this but for people in the audience and people watching at home I just want to re-emphasize that this this wouldn't have happened if <coughs> Kristen hadn't taken the initiative to start this and then Kristen and Nanachka working together working through all the details and um, and putting together you know all the data that then you know I was able to sit down with them and then sit down with them, with David and them. But it, this this started with our finance team and yeah. and was initiated by our town treasurer. And I just want to say that in front of everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful news. I don't have any more questions. Can so we just um, I just I guess you just need to vote to. Uh, execute uh, to approve. Uh, okay. to approve I'll, make, I'll make a motion to approve and execute the refinancing documents for the current debt bonds. Point out that the uh, I don't know that you second need, actually need to read this into the minutes, but that's the motion that oh. on council okay. <coughs> will uh, want to see in the minutes, and it's up to the board uh, whether you want to actually read that very lengthy motion. <laughs> I don't think it's a... I think you can make a motion to to, uh, to accept the wording, to approve the wording as submitted by bond council, and then that, that document becomes a record of evidence. I'll the add, motion of bond council, yeah. yeah. Right, well, I'll add that to my motion, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so and I'll, I'll second the amendment. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? Okay. Good news. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Four copies of this to sign. No, Three hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars was the final number. That's that's about double what our initial yeah. estimate was. Our conservative estimate. That's great. And nine nine entities bidding on this. I mean, that's that's also probably double what I would have expected. I think that this could not have been better from my point of view. So I'm not sure how you want to handle this for these. There's 10 copies right here. <laughs> <laughs> these Can we hand those out? <laughs> <laughs> Each member needs to sign every, every bond issue. Yep, I saw so um, Should we do this at the end of the meeting? Is that permitted? Can we do it at the end? Do you need to leave with them tonight? I don't have to leave Actually, with them. Actually, no, we're going to get them on Monday. So All right, so you can do it at the end of the meeting. Okay. All right, sounds good. We'll do it before we adjourn. We'll do this, this, this. Okay. Sounds good. We will sign them before we adjourn. And we won't lose them. And everything should be clearly marked as to where it is. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for everything. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
That's going to be here. Uh, we have a recommendation from police, police Chief Nelson to appoint Reserve Officer Maxwell uh, Brett and Brian DeFresnia as full-time entry-level police officers. Well, Max and Brian are both, you know, familiar. They've, they've been with us. Max has been just over a year, and, and Brian just under a year. Um, and just a brief review from last meeting we had, uh, both Matt and uh, Will resigned and went to Worcester. Mm -hmm. So that opened up two full-time spots. Mm -hmm. So we've been recruiting uh, highly motivated uh, reserve officers um, that uh, want a career in the police field. And uh, I put the notice out, you, you gave me permission to go back in and internally um, ask the employees, the reserve officers, if they want to be uh, considered for the position. Um, now out of all of the, um, the reserve officers, I had two candidates. So. Two for two, so I, <laughs> it wasn't much. I, you know, obviously it, well. it, it did. So I didn't have. There was no fighting. There was no test. Um, they both come highly recommended um, from all their um, co-workers, mm -hmm. supervisors, and, and myself. Um, they've, they've done great for us. No problems. No issues. And um, I feel very comfortable uh, um, asking you to promote them up to uh, full time, contingent on a whole bunch of things. Uh, one, I have to get a temporary waiver. They have to agree to um, the recruitment partial reimbursement. And that's um, how we had with Jeff, that um, if we pay their way, sponsor them through the academy, pay $3,000 for the fee to get them into the academy, uh, pay all the uniform costs, pay their salary while they're in the academy, they're gonna give us five-year commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, pay back 10,000 plus the three, plus any other expenses, and then it drops down by 2,000 each year until they complete five years. Right. Then after five years, I hope they'll like it enough that they'll, they'll just stay in that house. <laughs> you could have a future chief in front of us here somewhere, right? Uh, possibly. <laughs> you, you gotta start somewhere. So um, certainly they're, they're here for any questions um, they may have for them, and, and go from there. I have no questions. No, I think no. What do you think about the bond offering? <laughs> 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 any comments? Or? <laughs> so the, the, the only thing I'll add is I, I will leave um, a couple documents. Um, if they want to sign them, they can sign them later. I, I, don't, I don't need to okay. um, take them. But um, I'll, I'll need signatures for the temporary waiver mm -hmm. because I've got to apply for that. So that's the next time the committee meets is in February. Um, so we can't put them on until I get the temporary waiver. And that's so, with the union? That, no, um, uh, MPTC, uh, the Mass Police right. Training Committee. Okay. So um, I can't give them a full-time uh, job until I have that temporary waiver. So once I get the temporary waiver, February 21st, if they call me up and say I have it, then I can, I can say you guys are good to go. Okay. So whatever you guys decide now, it's contingent on all that. Right, gotcha. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Um, and then and once then, we get the waiver, that's when they can start policing full-time until they get to the academy. Exactly. They, as reserves, they can take as many shifts as they want right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Max, um, I've already secured a seat in the next academy. If all goes well, it, it's reserved, so it's obviously uh, he's ready. He already had most of the paperwork ready uh, to go, physical, and the PAT that he had to do. Uh, so uh, I actually got a seat in March for him if all okay. works out well. Cool. Uh -huh. Cool. What do you need from us? And, and one more thing, I, I do need Don's signature. He'll, he'll need permission to sign the uh, recruit agreement. That's the uh, payment. Okay. And from you, I just need, um, obviously, uh, to appoint him full-time contingent on everything that we have. Okay. All right. Point. Then I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, Reserve Officers Maxwell Bressy and Brian Dufresne as full-time entry-level police officers uh, per all the conditions that and you have uh, described to us this evening and to allow Mr. Lowe to sign whatever documents that are necessary by you to get the thing rolling. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any hands? Great. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
There's some uh, empty seats in here if you want to come in. So next we have an update on the Still River Commons project um, with the town planner, Erica Yardi. Hi, Erica. And uh, do we have the attorney or we have... I'm here on behalf of the attorney and developer, Ducharme Dillis. What is your name? Seth Donahoe. That's Seth. Good evening. Good evening. So we're going to start. Do you want to start? take us out, Erica? Sure. Um, so uh, the ZBA hearing um, has been continued to February 12th. Um, so we're still going through the public hearing process. Um, to date, we've received uh, numerous comments from departments, boards, um, residents. The applicant has, I would say, responded to most of them. I don't know if they've been fully addressed, but um, we have received responses. Um, most of the hearing up till now has been dedicated to the peer review um, that Horsley Wetton Group has, has completed. Um, they've done um, a very thorough job of going through, going through the engineering um, of the project. Um, I would say that their major comments, revisions, um, were um, looking at the, so the stormwater for that site is um, being collected and being sent to an underground infiltration system. So Horsley Wynn had them do some additional soil testing to confirm the soils to make sure that it's actually going to infiltrate the way that they say it will. Um, and then also providing um, a two foot separation to groundwater. So that was that was a major comment and that required some redesign of that system. Um, the second major comment I would say would be um, capturing some of that runoff that drains from the proposed driveway to Still River Road. Um, and I believe the applicant is still addressing that and that sort of being incorporated with some of the, the DBW comments um, that were made. And then lastly, uh, we had done a site visit um, with Horsley Witten along with Rebecca, Rebecca Long, Longval, um, and they had questioned some of the locations of the wetland flags. So um, the applicant has agreed to go through the, the ANRAD process with Conservation Commission. Um, so that's, that's basically, I think, where we're at with the peer review. In terms of outstanding items uh, that still need to be addressed with CBA, would be um, obviously confirming the wetland line and then addressing um, the latest round of comments from Hong Kong. Um, the attorney did say that um, they'd be providing uh, uh, an updated uh, waivers list, uh, particularly related to the waivers being requested from Bolton's wetlands bylaw, because currently it's very hard to deviate to really understand um, what they're going to be waiving um, for the project. So that we should be receiving that for the, for the next hearing. Um, DPW did have a comment about um, including a design for a culvert under the driveway entrance mm -hmm. to handle runoff that goes along Still River Road and to also handle the runoff that's going to be basically draining from the driveway to the road. Um, and then as part of that design, the applicant has agreed to also provide um, best management practices upgrading and downgrading of the culvert to um, provide some additional treatment before it goes into the um, the, the the stream that's 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 a lot further down on, on Still River Road. Um, there's a retaining wall right now that is shown on the plan extending into the road right of way, so that needs to be um, pulled back. Um, uh, that, that was something that Joe had had um, had requested. Um, and then something that I had recommended at the last meeting, and I believe some of the, the residents had recommended as well, um, was providing uh, nitrogen pretreatment as part of the septic system since um, the systems are going to be less than 100 feet from, from the wetlands. That's something that's required by our local um, 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 Board of Health regulations. Uh, but they are requesting, um, they're, they're requesting a waiver from the local Board of Health regulations to be closer than that um, 100 feet. So that, that's why the, 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 the nitrogen pretreatment um, is a recommendation for myself and from the abutters. 
And then lastly, they still need to complete the design review process. This is something that the applicant had agreed to do um, way back before they had even made their submission to um, ZBA. So um, they've gone through one meeting with, with that board, but um, it still needs to get wrapped up. So that's, that's basically where we stand at this point. Great, thank you for that, Erica. So what are the next dates coming up in this process, important dates? So February 12th um, is the next hearing date, and then March, uh, I don't have it in my packet, but it's, 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 I think it's March, it's either, it's March 21st, I believe, or is it the 19th? Um, is when so we basically have the, the ZBA has 180 days to hold a public hearing and then essentially they would need to close it and then deliberate on, on their decision. So um, we're nearing that 100 day, 180 day mark at the you know, mid, mid March. Okay. When I look at the plans or, or the, the documents, the, the, I guess the initial documents, there, there was a discussion that there was a, a variation in the square footage in some of the units. But when I looked at the, the plans and, and the, the, the dimensional stuff, it looked like all the units were exactly the same height, width, and length. So I couldn't see how you could have one having three or four or hundred square feet more than another. So you know, that's one comment I had. Two. Uh, you know, some of them, I think, are two, and some of them are three bedroom. Um, is is the extra bedroom that little ten by ten thing that sits out in the back, on the ground floor behind the garage? Is that the third bedroom in some of these units? Because I didn't see anything that would. Again, they all looked exactly the same to me, uh, square footage wise and and layout. So, in the ones that have the extra bedroom, where's the extra bedroom? I can address that for you if you like. There's a, a mix of units with some of them having essentially a slab on grade and some of them having a walkout basement. So your square footage difference is for the units that allow for the livable lower level on them. Okay. And, but, but that walkout was ten, but ten by ten. So how how do you get how do you get three hundred square feet out of ten by ten? I I'm not <laughs> fully I'm not the architect. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, <clears throat> but there were architectural floor plans in there. And my understanding of it is the difference is that we call them unit A and unit B on the plan. There's, there's right. a variety, and, and the difference is in the configurations of the interior spaces, um, with the bigger one being the one that obviously has the walkout, which I afford for a smaller, lower level on it. Right. So that's a, le a whole level below the, the garage. Correct. So it, in general, the site, um, you would come in, and there's a, a turnaround area, which would look like a, a regular at grade house and then on some of the units there's uh, the ability to go down to a lower level on that. which is also the third bedroom i would assume i believe so yeah seth do you have anything to show us on the plans that you brought up? i do have some overview plans I, i'm happy to put them up if you need a, a review of the site briefly I, sure. I don't want to block off any of the butters though so let's mm -hmm. put them up whatever's convenient for the board Will that work for you? Yeah. So the, the site's on the easterly side of Still River Road. Harbor Town Line is right here. It's approximately 6.68 acres. Uh, development's limited to just over one acre, which is represented by this area here. And the site contains uh, eight units total, and those are in four duplex style buildings, which are depicted here. And it, as you mentioned, there's six two bedroom units, and then there's two three bedroom units. So it's, it's an application under Mass General Law Chapter 40B for a comprehensive permit. And under that, 25% of the units would be deep restricted as affordable units uh, perpetually. And this is our access area. Presently, there's, a, there's an unimproved access, a little bit down gradient of it. But that will allow for all weather access to the site with a suitable turning radius for emergency vehicles or any other large vehicles there. And then each unit um, has the required parking by the zoning bylaw with one garage space and then at least one additional space in their driveway. Some of them do afford for, for room for more stacked parking in their driveways. And as Erica mentioned, we've, we've been working with the Zoning Board of Appeals, listening to other comments. We've also been working with the Zoning Board of Appeals 
consultant um, and peer review consultant, Horses Whitman, and we are taking into consideration all of their comments. We've been replying to the to the peer reviewer through the ZBA throughout the process and uh, working primarily on stormwater management issues, which a lot of the review has focused on so far. Basically, this the what you're doing though is creating a hill within kind of what I call meadow or a wet meadow. So you're building up a hill and then you're building houses on it that the back sides are on the bank. Generally, there is a small hill at the front of the site and that's the proposed septic areas and that's going to be extended slightly to, to allow for the turning area. So is that 12 feet of fill, um, 10 feet? Mm -hmm. Under 10, it's, it's 7 to 8 in most spots and then it, it drops off rapidly uh, the buildings in general, the, the grading is to wrap around the buildings and then there'd be no change behind the building. So it's going to preserve the existing mm -hmm. grade in that area. Yeah, I'd be curious to know what it, that site looks like today um, with all the rain and the snow. Anybody drive by? We actually it's received uh, pictures from one of the abutters. I have it in email. I can send it to you. Okay. My take on the project is that it's too concentrated um, housing in too small an area because you're not spreading the four units over the six or eight acres because of, of wetlands. And so you're, they're all being jammed into one small spot. I'm not opposed to any housing on that area, but I don't see how... Um, a, a, a project like that serves the town or serves the housing needs of the town. Um, anyway, I'd like to see uh, much less, uh, far fewer units in that same one acre. Um, because that one acre has got to also contain, because of wetland issues as I understand it, that one acre also has to be where all the equipment used to build things has to move in or else, um, and I, I just don't see how you can put eight, eight living units, four buildings, eight units in one acre without really devastating the surrounding area. Um, so I, I live on Manor Road and um, a neighbor of mine on the corner of Manor and Wad Aquatic uh, bought a house from the same developer and he had no idea that he knew there was a um, conservation area around his house and that was marked by a fence, but he, that family had no idea that their yard flooded. And it's flooded now over the driveway and today. Um, you know, the DPW director has done some work on the culvert and that definitely helped, but he has, he has uh, an intermittent pond or a vernal pool there uh, for in the fall and the spring, and today it's flowed right over the driveway. And so he had no idea. And as a family, you know, it's very frustrating for them to buy a house. Um, and, you know, they're there for the long term, but just thinking about, you know, the quality of their life with this wet yard that they, you know, they thought they were buying the perfect house. And, uh, so it's, it's just very important for us as a town, for all of our boards, the Board of Health, to really work together to make sure, you know, we're protecting future homeowners. Um, because in this site, they did the same thing. They built the house above, um, above the water line. So you have a basement above ground, and then you have a huge, like, nine-foot hill in front of the house for the septic system. So it's very similar to this project. Um, it's only one house, but that's one homeowner who, you know, is very kind of unhappy. Everybody should take a drive by, you know, the corner of Water Aquatic and Manor and just take a look. He's got ducks, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it certainly does not at all fit the, with the character of the town. I mean, architecturally, it, it's it's not not at all appealing, even from that perspective. 
but to echo your comments, all the, the wetland implications, it's, um, they're, they're trying to cram, cram all this into such a small space. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, there's so many parcels of land that are dry for sale right now in Bolton. And I just don't know why there's this focus on doing this here. Um, are there any comments from the audience? Can you identify yourself? Sure. Um, Anastasia Downey, um, 366 Still River Road. I am not in a butter, um, but I am a taxpaying resident of Bolton. Um, and to the extent that it's relevant, I am a proponent of responsible, affordable housing development in this town. Uh, this project, as proposed, is not a responsible development. The site has been described as a wet site, a tight site, and a peninsula surrounded by wetlands. Uh, not only does this site have water surrounding it on three sides, but the groundwater on the site is high. It will require significant filling, mounding, retention of land um, to make the septic work for the Title V law. Um, even then, there's no guarantee that the septic or the stormwater systems, assuming they are maintained correctly over the years, won't be negatively affected uh, or negatively affect the groundwater, private wells, wetlands <coughs> resources um, that, it, that all of these units are, or all of these systems are very close to. Um, failure would be catastrophic for that whole area. Um, the surrounding proposed development area is is definitely subject to flooding. The project will impact the 100-year floodplain, and the water issues continue to wreak havoc on that portion of Still River Road now. Any water issues and costs related to the finished project will fall to the future owners, as you've mentioned, and to the town that's hidden the roads um, to mitigate. The developer will walk away from those problems. This is a tight building site on approximately one acre, as Seth mentioned, of land. The developer is proposing four duplex style homes, 240 feet of driveway and cul-de-sac, uh, impervious surface, uh, two nine bedroom septic systems mounted and retained, as well as a large stormwater infiltration area, which is under the cul-de-sac in part because there is nowhere else to put it. This tight site cannot support the density of this project. And based on its location, it will be devastating to the ecology of the environmentally critical lands that surround it. The ecological resources on and surrounding this property are still undefined and need to be established by experts in order for our ZBA to make an informed decision regarding this project. The entire property falls within an estimated habitat of rare wildlife and priority habitats of rare species. It's also designated as core habitat, identified in our biomap two. There are recent documented and approved sightings of the threatened Blanding's turtles in this area. Uh, the developer has yet to file a MESA review. I'll leave it at that. Um, analysis of ecological resources should be conducted on this site but they should be conducted during peak season. There was mention of some assessment being done now in January, which is very disheartening because when you're looking at wetlands, the hydrology, the vegetation, and the species all kind of come into play for when you're determining where a wetland mm -hmm. is. And right now you can't see the species and you can't um, see the vegetation because it's under the snow. Uh, finally, Bolton ZBA is tasked with weighing Bolton's need for affordable housing against the local concerns, uh, including public health and safety and environmental issues. The impacts of this project on Bolton's subsidized housing inventory will be, in the words of our planning board, insubstan unsubstantial, insubstantial, two affordable units offset by six market priced units. When you run the numbers, there is no notable increase in our effort to reach a 10% affordable housing goal. Bolton gets nothing positive out of this development. This is a wrong type of development for this unique and environmentally sensitive property. I strongly encourage the Board of Selectmen to recommend to the ZBA denial of this comprehensive permit application. Thank you. I'm Martha Remington, Chairman of the Bolton Historical Commission, and I would like to reiterate for people representing the developers and for those present 
that this Still River area is the most sensitive archaeological historical area in town uh, with artifacts and sites of mills and things. Uh, <clears throat> that alone should uh, shine a red light in front. Uh, I did request that if they discover artifacts, the developer should return them to the historical society here in town. Uh, things like Indian artifacts, whatever. So another reason that this is a poor choice of a place for dense development. Thank you. Sir? Hi, Bob Marshall, 302 Bowen Hill Road. Uh, I am an abutter to the project. I want to concur with um, what was just mentioned by Ms. Downey and uh, Ms. Remington. Um, also, you know, the affordable housing interests that are uh, being considered here by Mass Housing is uh, a general one and not specific to this project. Uh, I think in general they want to see every town in the Commonwealth strive to achieve their 10% inventory. But it doesn't necessarily have to be this location. Uh, and for the reasons mentioned, I would uh, argue that this is not a good location for this project. Um, one thing that I think might go a long way, uh, if you were to see fit, uh, in, in, in our, the opinion of denying uh, this project or denying your support for this project, I know recently in the town of Acton, uh, there's a similar 40B project going on, and the Board of Selectmen have weighed in there, uh, giving their um, thoughts uh, directly to Mass Housing. Um, that's not something that's required as part of the ZDA process, but I think uh, if you were to see fit to do that and also at the same time maybe uh, suggest to Mass Housing that there are other sites in town which might be more appropriate, that Bolton's committed to uh, reaching its affordable housing inventory, um, not in the future, but right now, uh, but that it's just this particular lot, this particular project is, is not in keeping with the spirit of the character of the town. Uh, as well as some health and safety and open space concerns, which are, as cited by Mass Housing, legitimate reasons for uh, the ZBA or the selectmen to uh, suggest that the project is not appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Robin Hi. from Joe Piccarello. We bought the property at 305 on Hill Road. And when we bought the piece of land, we had all the rules that we needed to follow with the conservation, with the wildlife, the fisheries, and um, we followed all those rules. And we just built our house last year. And just as you said, with the concern for your neighbor, we're greatly concerned about how this will affect our property and the property surrounding it. Um, it is all, there is a perennial stream in the back by the barn, and there's a stream that runs between our land and um, it's saturated all the time, and it seems like the meadow is getting more saturated as this year has gone on. Mm -hmm. We had to um, follow the um, certificate, of yeah, certificate of compliance with the National <coughs> uh, Wildlife and Fisheries as well, and in order to do that, we put posts in to d make people not go into the meadow, and it's just our family there, and we did that. And as we dug the posts, we hit water, and a lot of them at two feet. So, it, I mean, where is all the water going to go? It, it just up towards us, out into the road, all over. This, you have a number of people living there using uh, gallons and gallons of water every day. It's just going to be going back into the already saturated area. We've seen the turtles. We see a, a number of them. We've documented <coughs> them. We've. Um, you know. One thing about the stormwater management system. Yeah, but the two feet minimum is the minimum requirement for stormwater above the water line. If before four feet, two feet's the minimum. So this whole product is built on minimums. How much can they squeeze into a little spot with the minimal amount of distance between the stormwater recovery system and the waste the stormwater system in the groundwater? And the septic system is so tight and it's just not the right property for this type of building. Again, we're all for the 40 B's and full housing for everybody, but this lot is definitely the wrong lot to be, as they call it, a cluster development. And they squeeze it all in and it's just not the right lot for this location. I also wanted to add all the systems are pretty much under the driveway. What happens, I know they, they're, the condo association is supposed to be in compliance and follow, follow what they're supposed to maintain. 
but it takes that one time for someone to make a mistake or not see what's going on and how is that going to affect and then once that's done and how is it going to be a detriment and impact, negative impact on the property itself and all around, once it's done, it's done. You can't turn back. And it's they made mistakes on the lottery. They mowed the lot prematurely. So it's only the model lot between November 1st and May 31st for the turtles' protection. And they had that when they bought the property. And they we had that. And they mowed it in October. And then they also mowed on our property, not knowing where the property line was. None of us shot the property line between our property and that property. So they went 20 feet onto my property and mowed my, my meadow. Mm -hmm. And we called up um, Fish and Wildlife and not much response from them. So it was kind of disheartening that. You know, they didn't follow this the ordinance to not to mow certain times of the year, and they did it anyway. They said, "Oh, sorry, it was a mistake," and they just let it go. It's just too much. They've cut down shade trees on other lots, on on other projects in town, and they got fined for it. And they said, "Oh, sorry, we made a mistake. We cut the wrong trees down." So they got fined for it. They hit planting new trees, and they made a mistake with this property with the water systems or the you know some systems failing. Oops, sorry, we made a mistake. So, but at what cost? They've been a bad, tr bad track record in town. Well, I, I think um, you know all, all things considered. Uh, to to your point, um, you know, while yes, it's important that that Bolton have affordable housing, and and you know certainly, you know, I, I've actually been, we're, we're the board of selectmen are part of the affordable housing trust, and I was on the affordable housing commission years ago. I think in this case, the the fact that you're going to get two units uh, uh, is insignificant compared to you know what they're attempting to put on this small parcel, and obviously it's trying to maximize maximize revenue out of of the the property as it stands now. Um, so, from that perspective. Um, I personally don't think it's a the right development for that particular parcel, you know, in, in attempting to do what, what they're going to do. Uh, and I'm, you know, I as as one member of the board of selectmen, would be more than happy to recommend to the, the ZBA to vote against this this particular project. But that's up, up to my other two colleagues to determine that as well. I would agree with that. This is not this is not the right development for, for this for this uh, property. It's solely trying to maximize what, you know, who knows what went in the mind of the developer when he bought the property, but now he's, he's trying to get as much out of it as he can in the smallest piece. And it's, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You can put a single family home on there, you know, if, if, if that's even possible. But I'm, I'm more than happy to recommend to the ZBA. Just so you know, the way things work, the Board of Selectmen really don't have a lot of clout here. It's really the ZBA and the planning board that the clout, but I'm more than happy to uh, encourage my colleagues uh, to, to go in my direction to, to to vote to recommend that the ZBA disapprove this particular project. Yeah, I'd, I'd be in favor of that and also um, drafting a letter to the affordable housing. Uh, what was Affordable housing truck, yes. Yeah. That's how yeah, it's a letter that act and yeah. right. Not that we're against it, but this is not the right place to, uh, for it. So. Stan, do you want to go ahead and make your motion? Yes, I'll make a motion that the Board of Selectmen uh, uh, vote to officially uh, present to the, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals the, our disapproval of the uh, project on, at Still River Common. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? <coughs> and so if we could work on a letter. Mm -hmm. Can we confess one after Just the say no. We have one more quick yeah, comment. I, I, know that, um, I'm, I'm a little too late. But it is part of the watershed, and it's also very close to the ACEC area, and all of this watershed goes down. Still River is the chokehold there, and if they do this, they're going to absolutely destroy that whole area. Mm -hmm. And it also <coughs> goes down to the Nashville River, and we have just spent 30 years cleaning the river up 
and we don't need more pollutants going yep. into the river. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So, I'm Hearn and I chair the zoning board, so I appreciate all the advice that have been uh, attending the hearing so far. We've had a robust turnout, um, some great commentary, um, pushing the board as well as the developer to respond to their you know, technical questions, their fears, their concerns. Uh, they certainly expressed their love of Bolton and keeping Bolton beautiful and keeping it, you know, archaeological significant, not disrupting it. So um, I just say hats off to the town and to the different boards that have been involved in the process. Um, but I do welcome the support or whatever input the selectmen have. Um, I want you count yourself short on how much leverage you you do have in the town mm -hmm. and even to our board, but you, uh, while it's zoning board and the other boards that mm -hmm. feed to us, it is important to hear from our selectmen. Yep. So, um, and at the back end of the process, because it is the 40 week process, um, regardless of how much affordable we, we take on or not, um, at some point, any type of denial, you know, just from history, but at least my involvement, um, we'll be looking toward uh, probably an appeal. And so that's when the sector will have to mm -hmm. then support that appeal as far as the cost of the town. I'm not adverse to that. I'm just saying mm -hmm. your support is you know, important in that respect, too. Mm -hmm. well, as you know, Mr. Chairman, I'm I'm responsible for managing the legal budget and I'm perfectly comfortable <laughs> applying whatever funds from the legal budget that would be necessary to support that. So thank you. 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 Thank Anyway, I can I can update on that and the big thing as I said last time, the strike from the lock I'm sorry, the lockout, not a strike, the lockout the national dirty no longer. Um everyone is back on Monday, that's my and um, so we're able to proceed as we had originally planned, which is a great thing. I'm so relieved, we're all relieved that the that the walkout that the walkout is um, is over. Um, update on the portico project. Um, as I told you last time, we had some uh, some new structural challenges, and we now have uh, design for that. Uh, we've got good design for the shoring that we would need. Um, given where we are right now with the weather situation, um, we're looking at having the uh, remaining asbestos abated by, worst case, I think next Friday, a week from tomorrow. Uh, then we may shut down for the remainder of the winter season, which we're, Joe and I are calling eight weeks. Um, so back to, you know, out to mid-March. Um, don't see any reason why we still can't have this done by June. Um, and, you know, because of, uh, you know, some of the, uh, well, because of the uh, change orders and uh, whatnot, um, it's a it's going to be a tight budget, but we're we're very confident that we're still going to be able to keep it within within budget. Um, but I have to say, uh, Joe and Joe and our architect are meeting uh, weekly with the contractor and and ma managing it very tightly. Um, Is the back quano cleaned up? I'm sorry. The back quano. The back quano is the, the, yes, that back quano and the asbestos will all be gone before we shut down for the okay. winter. I. Glad I don't have to make my living doing that. Um, um, update on the Board of Selectmen's uh, on moving the Selectmen's meeting to the Public Safety Building. Um, I presented the uh, capital request to 
the joint meeting of capital planning and advisory uh, this past Tuesday night. Uh, Bob was there as well, uh, fielded many questions from both boards. And um, the one thing that I've, I've adjusted the expense slightly um, for the labor, because I, I think I told you at the last meeting I was uh, pursuing some procurement questions to make sure that um, if we go forward with this that it's done the right way. Uh, what I hadn't considered is that the labor to do this would fall under prevailing wage um, and definitely had not anticipated that. It's a few hundred dollars, it's not a major hit, but it's something that I'm glad I caught early, uh, which is why when in doubt, call the state and find out. And, um, so we so we got that taken care of. But the estimated cost is still around thirteen thousand dollars. It was a few hundred dollars and way more. But so anyway, uh, so that took place. Um, aside from that, uh, two quick things which are not on the agenda. Uh, one word to one thing you're doing later. But as I was trying to finish my annual report today. Um, I looked at it and I realized that what I needed to add to it, and I did ultimately, was in, uh, for 2018 what we brought in for grant money. Mm -hmm. And I thought the board would be um, very interested to hear that, um, and, I, and I can't say this enough, my staff initiated the, uh, pursuing these various grants and we received $141,060 for the Green Communities Grant. We, uh, We've been awarded, and then we have a signed contract, $975,000 for the MassWorks grant, so we can start spending against that. As uh, part of our community compact, which Lieutenant Governor Polito awarded to the town in a ceremony at the Houghton Building last year, we were able to acquire the following funds. $10,000 for assistance to create our complete streets policy. $38,746.75 to create our complete streets transition plan. That plan will allow us to pursue funds in the future for engineering and construction to make road improvements uh, in, the tar in the what will be the targeted locations. $25,000 to create our Americans with Disabilities transition plan. That plan will allow us to apply for funds to help make our town buildings more accessible. $22,635 for our IT infrastructure grant uh, project that we just completed last week where we transitioned from uh, GOTMS over to the new Viewpoint Cloud software, which is a huge uh, improvement in how we're able to do things. And the, um, the planning department, um, the building department, the uh, fire department, and the town clerk's office will all be able to utilize this. So to put it in perspective, uh, the grants that I just mentioned resulted in a grand total of $1,212,441.75 being awarded to the town in 2018, and I just want to again recognize my, my, my staff for initiating those grant applications. That's Congratulations. Great. Congratulations. That's five or six percent of our budget. It is. So it's great. Or equal to that, I should say. So, yes, that's so very good. Small town, we, we, we had a good good grant year. And, um, and in conclusion, as we segue into your public service announcements, just uh, look, reminding folks that tomorrow is coffee with the town administrator from, oh from 8 30 at 9 30 at, uh, at the Bolton Dean. Oh um, if, you, if you don't see me with a cup of coffee in front of me and you'd like to buy me one, we can talk about this. <laughs> I'm going to be reciting the bond issue from memory. I will. I will. So, anyway, <laughs> unless you have any questions, that's what I have for tonight. Thank that's you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, do we have any public service announcements? Uh, I did notice that the uh, DPW has uh, sent out a request for anybody who's got motor oil. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a little low, and um, so it's not too early to get out those lawnmowers and uh, change the oil in preparation for the sudden spring we have. And bring the used motor oil to uh, the DPW. We do have to call first to uh, make an appointment to drop it off. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a, a, a brief one. I uh, signed up for my burn permit and I noticed how great the website, okay. the new process for getting a permit is, and the website is working really well. So it's great to hear. Thank you. Um, and one thing, if we haven't done it already, we will be doing it 
um, tomorrow. But um, as as we all know, unfortunately, there was a fire in town mm -hmm. recently, and uh, and I should have said earlier that you know the fire department really did an excellent job in responding to that and limiting the impact of the fire. Uh, but the fire chief did put up, up on the fire department's website or Facebook no website um, some tips for chimney cleaning and safety and that type of thing. And if, if, if those tips aren't also up on our website now, they, they will be tomorrow. So to so clean to get that. your chimney once a year. Once a year, absolutely. Where um, you can have a chimney fire. Chief, yeah, that's right. Just Chief Lejandre was very proactive about getting that up right away. So we uh, we have uh, we're going to execute the amended regulatory agreement for Craftsman Village on Sugar Road. So I read that over. It sounds like I, they're just moving the unit, the affordable units around. Mm -hmm. And so Eric has looked at over, and it's not like they're no, moving like the affordable units and into a certain area that's less favorable. That's right. Favorable. No, that Erica was, was fine with it. Okay. Make a motion that we execute the amended regulatory agreement for Crafton Village. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? Mm -hmm. Here's the document that needs to be signed. There's one mm -hmm. line, so I'm assuming. There was a lot of signing. I wonder if it just requires the one signature. So, Eric is still here? Yeah, she is. Just that, um... Just with the red. Yes. Yep. And I motorize okay. that. And then we have a designation of animal control officer and assistant animal control officer for MGL chapter 140 section 151 attached. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's strictly a procedural thing that we need to do. Any comments? Nope. I'm assuming it's the same folks that you put it, it, says it, super, it says Supervisor Stan Wasaki. Yeah, yeah, that was at the stand, it was the chair at the time. Oh, okay. You but are the new should, supervisor. Should, 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 we, <laughs> should, yes. should we make you the supervisor, Tom? Actually, it needs to be the, the, the chairman. Okay. Because um, the, uh, the position actually reports to the Board of Selectmen and not the town administrator. Okay. Right. So I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, Animal Control Officer and Assistant Animal Control Officer per MGL Chapter 40, 140, Section 151. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any okay. against? Okay. And here are the two documents that need to be signed in, in the right hand column. You know, you'll see where I mean, those are the changes that have been made. Okay. Thank you, Erica. Hi, Erica. Designate a representative from the Board of Selectmen to attend the finance team meeting on January 29th, yeah, 2019. You see, every meeting that we have is part of the budget process. And as I said at the last meeting, there is no, it's not a liaison role if it, there's a selectman available who would like to attend the finance team meeting. Um, there's always a, a, a seat for a selectman, and the board just normally decides who goes. Um, I'm not, I'm not available, I say. Bob, you interested? No, I'm not available. I am interested, but I'm not available. Right now, but I can uh, January 29th. It's Tuesday. 10, 10 a.m. It's a Tuesday, right? Yes. yes. Tuesday. I mean, it, it's not a requirement if you'd like to come. Okay, I'll, I'll look at my schedule and I'll try and make it. Okay. 
Uh, Brian Boyle will be there from the advisory committee okay. as the chair. All right, thank you. Um, oh, we, sorry, we just have that. Oh, did you have anything else? No, I didn't know. So call a caucus for March 4th, 2019 and execute the notice. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Against. Okay, there are some. Cool. Just find a couple more sheets for your assignment. Oh, I have them here. Mm -hmm. You're a notary, Linda? Yes. How hard was that? Um, it's. We just have to um, fill out an application. Why you want to be a notary? Oh. No. Is that easy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. You just have to put the uh, chief's rules may have been more difficult. Oh, maybe they have. Well, I mean, they're talking uh, 10 years ago, they changed rules or something oh. like that. Next, we're going to okay. review okay. the first draft of the 2018 Board of Selectmen's annual review. I don't lying awake at night reading <laughs> It's, each has a copy. What I've done is I've, I've outlined uh, topics to discuss to make sure I've captured everything. I uh, went through all the uh, meeting agendas for last year. Uh, if there's something that we want to add, and what I'll start doing then is I'll start adding more narrative to that. But basically, this is just a list of potential items to discuss for the uh, annual report. So if you think there's something that's missing, let me know, and I will uh, add to it. But uh, uh, I just wanted to capture the topics, and I will, some of them I may just do bullet form, some of them I'll do narrative, uh, but I just wanted to make sure we captured everything. So it's it's too early to like add commas and all that stuff. Oh, no, no, no commas. <laughs> no commas. It's now, it, it, I, if I miss something, let me know. Tell me a comma. Oh, no, 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 no okay. commas. Too early. All right. Too early. No, so no early comments. draft. Early draft. No commas. So just go through it and uh, send anything, anything, you know, stand, I'd like to add this or that, and I'll, I'll incorporate it in. But uh, Senator Tran, mm -hmm. is he coming? Um, is there really, is there really such a person? <laughs> Senator Tran is actually going to be at the Houghton Building holding office hours on um, Monday from 10.30 to 11.30. To 11 he is. I thought he, I thought he canceled out on that. That's a reschedule for this is the, the reschedule. Oh, the reschedule. Okay. Right. So we're going to have to nail down those earmarks. I'm working on it. Okay. So. So let's just go through. We don't have to go through it right now. Let's just okay. go, go through it. Just shoot that. Send me an email if you think that I, I left something off, and then I'll, I'll build up the narrative for everything here. And uh, minutes. No minutes. Okay. We're still missing the minutes from December 6th. December 6th. Mm -hmm. They're still outstanding. And that's on me. Okay. <laughs> Unless you've passed the line to somebody that I don't well, know about. <laughs> no, I haven't seen them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I know what it means. I've been, I've been checking that spam filter oh, several times you? a day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, was sent, it was sent to you in an alternative universe. <laughs> uh, I got that look from Linda earlier today, Jonathan, so you're not the first. <laughs> and she does it so well. I know. She said years of you practice. Be more specific. <laughs> Jonathan, I'm waiting for the six. Oh. Uh, that works. Okay, so I guess we're done and we're ready to go into executive session. Uh, we actually do not need an executive session until we do Good. Wow. Do we need to sign these while we're still in session? You do not. You voted them while you're in session. Yeah, you can sign them outside. Okay. I will. Outside of session. Then I'll make a motion that we adjourn and uh, sign our lives away. Mm -hmm. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. So you have this. That's more paperwork than you have to sign when they're a liberal.